a phoenix to rise up from all those ashes today. Yeah, you've been scarred, but you a czar. You can crawl to the grave. I know you know that a lion is inside, sleeping in your heart. Step back and remember who you. What up, Pride? It's your boy Mari, back again with another reaction video. As you can see, I'm in a different location. I'm actually on vacation, but I am filming on vacation because I didn't want to leave you guys without a video for too long. So, excuse the, the weird lighting and weird background set it's a hotel okay i didn't i didn't pick out the, the ugly couch i'm sitting on but we're getting into the last song of act one today which is called non-stop a lot of people have said that this song is super great so i'm excited for it if you haven't subscribed definitely make sure to subscribe i can see in the analytics that a lot of y'all ain't subscribed so please subscribe it's free it don't cost you nothing it helps the channel out immensely and you won't miss out on any of my reactions to all of the songs in act two because we have a whole nother half to go so definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button but without further ado let's get into this and i'll see all you guys on the other side john dreamed of emancipating and recruiting three thousand men for the first all-black military regiment his dream of freedom for these men dies with him tomorrow there'll be more of us after the war i went back to new york uh of the war i went back to new york i finished up my studies and i practiced law i practiced law burr work next door even though we started at the very same time alexander hamilton began to climb how to account for his rise to the top man the man is non-stop okay so already quite a few thoughts one this this is not a, a musical motif this is an amari motif I don't know if you guys remember, I totally called that Burr had a lawyer-esque vibe. Do y'all remember that? I think it was in um, Ten Commandments. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was saying that he had the, the poise of a lawyer. So the fact that he went on to be a lawyer, I mean, the, the boy is prophetic is what I'm saying. I can see the future! Also, we got another change of coat for Hamilton. And as I've touched on in several videos, definitely in Alexander Hamilton, he changes his coat. But also in, I think, Right Hand Man, he makes the other coat change. And each of those coat changes, I think, is a visual representation of like a symbolic change of... Uh, Hamilton standing in life in each new phase he goes in he gets a new coat and so the fact that he has this new like bright green coat I guess that's his lawyer coat uh which is interesting this is this is I don't know why I just assumed this whole thing was going to be the war but like obviously not because like Yorktown already happened they're saying after the war so now we're moving on to post-war days dope I just wanted to point out that uh we are getting a, a new coat for this this new phase of Hamilton's life and also that I was totally right like th two or three videos ago when I said that Burr had a a lawyer-esque vibe I didn't I didn't see the lawyer thing coming for Alex like even though he likes to argue he has more of like a warrior vibe than a lawyer vibe so I didn't catch that one but I caught the other one so are you Making history. Hamilton to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt with my assistant counsel. Co counsel Hamilton said that a client that me reeks is innocent. Call your first witness. That was all you had to say. Okay, one more thing. Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Assume that attitude may be your doom. Why do you write like you're running out of time? Right day and night like you're running out of time. It's colonies, economies increasingly starving and honest. That's why public service seems to be calling mm, mm, mm. this this co wait, hold on this colony's economy is is hold on hold on hold on there was there was there was a bar in there give me give me one second i gotta go back and i gotta hear that and then i got some stuff to say about like burr's mindset and stuff this colony's economy is increasingly stalling and honestly that's when public service seems to be calling me that's hard boy that's hard there's that whole line there uh we have multiple <laughs> internal rhymes going at the same time obviously we have the the lee with economy calling me honestly like that you have the the e sound but you also have stalling and calling both happening in, in you get, get, that's hard that is hard okay alex is he ain't messing around no more okay he, he, he told y'all hey i'm him okay he told y'all it way back in my shot 
I got the bars, okay? My mind on a different level, okay? I, I lack the polish, but I got the flow. And, um... Yeah, that that's that was hard. That was hard. Anyway, back to Burr. Uh, Burr, I think, is very interesting in that he has this like almost failing rivalry, or or even like one sided rivalry with Hamilton. It, it's clearly th the frustration is mounting in that Hamilton is like this wildfire of a person, but it keeps working out for him. It keeps getting him good positions, getting him acclaim, getting him the, the rich girl, helping him climb to the top as a lawyer. And even when they're working this case together, like Hamilton is, whether intentionally or not, kind of putting him down. Like he, he called him his assistant. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're co-counsel. Like, chill out, bro. And you have to do all that extra dramatic stuff that you're doing. Just say, like, say what you need to say. But um, Hamilton being... Hamilton, he does not wired in that way. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. And so it's interesting to see like their relationship develop. And I don't know that Hamilton is aware of like the growing uh, resentment in Burr. Well, maybe because he was like, I practice law, Burr works next door. Like, I don't know. A, a couple of his comments are like a little bit like putting Burr down. It is what it is. But uh, for sure, anytime we get an internal monologue with Burr, it is like always juxtaposing the two of them. And I, I just find that really interesting. And it's, it feels like it's starting to spill out into like their dynamic in person. But I, I can't tell if Alexander is just blunt and unaware and like his ambition is as a result, like stepping on Burr's toes, which we know Burr is bothered by, or if he is like feeling that energy from Burr and he's like kinda, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I practice the law, practically perfected it. I've seen injustice in the world and I've corrected it. Now for a strong central democracy, if not then I'll be Socrates throwing verbal rocks at these mediocrities. Hamilton mm. at the Constitutional Convention. I was chosen for the Constitutional Convention. There is a New York Junior Delegate. Now what I'm gonna say may sound indelicate. <gasps> Talks for six hours, the convention is listless. Right, young man. Yo, who the F is this? Why do you always... <laughs> Bro, hold on, hold on, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm so glad that I, I paused between Lawrence and, and this, because it's like such a, it's such an energetic shift, and uh, I know that it's like bothering some people that I'm bringing up into parts, but I wouldn't have been able to really enjoy like all of this comedy that's laden into this, uh, if I was like, you know, trying to hold back tears from, from what happened with Lawrence. And I, I get, that's what everybody else had to do when they were like watching it in person, but I wasn't there in person. So this is my experience. And so, um, yeah, I just, this this song is incredibly funny, which I guess is like a nice pick me up from like the, the absolute dread that we just had in the previous song. But yeah, between burst facial expressions and like just general annoyance with, with Alexander Hamilton, it's kind of like when you, you watch like a toddler in a store, not like you're babysitting the toddler, but like just like a random toddler, you don't have a connection to the parents or the child and you just see them like, like throwing a tantrum or something and you're just like, bruh. Like th that's kind of, th that bruh is kind of like Aaron Burr's just whole vibe with Hamilton, like kind of like, he, he's aghast at the the general insanity of Hamilton's uh, personality, but also like Hamilton is kind of that dude. You feel me? Like he's, first off, his his writing in in all of this is better than everybody's. Like the, there was another. As soon as I unpaused from the last insane thing that he said when he was standing on the table, we got another insane little line that he ripped off. There's a bunch, a bunch of internal rhymes in Alexander's section, which I think is just like showing the point that he is like mentally so much, he's on a different level than everybody else who's in this situation, which is part of the reason that he got invited to whatever little convention that he got invited to that he was very ecstatic about, which... He's, he said he's not going to throw away his shot. He he didn't. A six-hour speech on proposing an entire new form of government is insane. But also, it's the it's the right kind of audacious for for Alex. You know, it's it just it just fits who he is. And I love 
this dynamic between the two of them that Alex isn't focused on Burr like at all, really. He's he's kind of just out being his honey badger self, and Burr is sitting there watching in you know what it is? If you've ever seen a cat and a dog live in the same house together and seen generally how annoyed with the the dog's presence the cat is, that's the vibe that these two give. Like the dog is just like running around doing crazy dog stuff, wants to play, and the cat is just like, bruh, will you sit your ass down somewhere? Why why do you have to be doing all this? And um it's great. It's great. I love it. I love it. If not that I'm Socrates, rolling verbal rocks to these mediocrities. <laughs> Hamilton at the Constitutional Convention. I was chosen for the Constitutional Convention. Right, young man. Yo, who the F is this? Why do you always say what you believe? Why do you always say what you believe? Every proclamation guarantees free ammunition for your enemies. Why do you write it like it's going out of style? What do you need? Burr, you're a better lawyer than me. Okay. I know I talk too much. I'm abrasive. You're incredible in court. You're succinct, persuasive. My client needs a strong defense. You're the solution. Uh, who's your client? The new U.S. Constitution. No. Hear me <laughs> out. No way. A series of essays anonymously published defending the document to the public. It's the Constitution's a mess. So it needs amendments. It's full of contradictions. So is independence. We have to start somewhere. Hey, what are you waiting for? What do you stall for? What? He won the war. What was it all for? Do you support this constitution? Of course. Then defend it. And what if you're backing the wrong horse? Burr, we studied and we fought and we killed for the notion of a nation we now get to build. For once in your life, take a stand with pride. I don't understand how you stand to the side. I'll keep all my... Okay, so, um... The plot thickens, obviously. Once we got this little uh, piano section, nighttime, uh, Alexander coming to Burr, he was clearly in the middle of like some family time or some other things. Uh, and he's like, bruh, what are you doing in my house in the middle of the night? Like, this better be about work. Alex is off on like some, some tangent of like, our client is the government. And so um, it's so interesting. Like the, the dynamic between the two of them is... They act as perfect foils for each other from Alexander's like completely unchecked, unrestrained ambition while also he's cocky, but he's also self-aware, which is very interesting because he on in one hand is like, I basically perfected being a lawyer. But on the other hand, he's also like, Bert, you're you're better at being a lawyer than me. You're succinct, you're persuasive. Uh, and I know, I talk too much, I'm abrasive. Like, I I like that Hamilton knows his faults and his shortcomings, and he's not letting that impede him towards his goals. He's still continuing to go. He's just trying to find people who can help him in the ways that he needs help. I think that that's really smart. A lot of times, people who are this ambitious can often end up in a mindset of like, I have to do everything myself. I can't like delegate to anybody and that can lead you astray because just because you have the ambition and the desire to do something does not mean that you are the best person to do that you know sorry the, the, like a seagull or something just like flew up and landed on the balcony and that like threw me off uh, but anyway the the point is i really like this dynamic here because we're, we're seeing from burr's perspective being the the cautious and methodical person that burr is he's like i'm not gonna put my neck out there for this constitution that I don't even know is going to be the form of government that we're going to have. And then Alex is, of course, getting frustrated. He's like, bro, what did we just die for? Lawrence is dead fighting for this dream. And you over here chilling like I'm trying to build a nation. This is a pressing time in history. We don't have time to, to wait. We have to do something. This is a strategy that both of us believe in. We need to defend it or else it will crumble, especially knowing how it ends. I don't know why it ends the way it does, but I, I know how it ends. I'm very invested in this, this back and forth between them and the fact that they are so, they're almost like family where you're, you're connected but you can still butt heads a lot and be very different as people, but you're always like kind of circling each other, like two stars in orbit of each other. Given the fact that I've heard like Alexander Hamilton's name more in history, I'm guessing that his strategy ended up paying off, but it's just interesting to watch these, these two men who have ambitions of being great, but 
are taking very differing and diverging paths to get there, but they keep crossing. They keep picking the same field after the war. They keep fighting in the war. They keep like, you know, they, they keep coming across each other, but because they're so different, they're like magnets that are attracting and then repelling each other. Uh, who's your client? The new U.S. Constitution. <laughs> no. Hear me out. <laughs> no way. A series of essays. The Constitution's a mess. So it needs amendments. It's full of contradictions. So is independence. We have to start somewhere. No. <clears throat> Sorry. I was drinking. I didn't expect to catch something new there. I like the it's full of contradictions. So is independence. Because, yes, the same men who said all men are created equal, liberty for all, also owned slaves and didn't let women vote. Like, do you, you see what I'm saying? And also, like, if you were poor, you also didn't count in that. So it was basically just like liberty and freedom for everybody who's white, a man, and rich. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's a subtle but, like, very apt call out of the fact that, like, what they were doing at the time was in itself a contradiction. That doesn't mean that you don't start. Like, it's not going to be perfect. Just because it's not perfect doesn't mean that you can't start. The only way to get to perfect is by starting the process and going. And again, as I've said, mentally, I'm more of the the Hamilton mindset. I'm literally, I'm working on vacation. I am wired in a way that is more like Hamilton. So I, I get where he's coming from. I can empathetically understand where Burr is coming from. But at the same time, I, I agree that you can't just sit by and do nothing because if you sit by and do nothing then you end up nowhere and i feel like hamilton's recognition of the contradiction that is their independence but at the same time still feeling that it's something to fight for is like the it, it's great it's great i i really i rock with that i don't understand how you stand to the side i'll keep all my plans close to my chest Okay, um, I was, I was finna pause. I was finna say some other stuff about the, 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 the motif of the wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, referencing the, the song, wait for it, which is the song where we get this like first real inkling of Burr's mindset, where we learn that he is not just sitting on the side doing nothing as Alex just blatantly just called him out for. He is lying in wait, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike the issue with that is that sometimes that that door never opens if you're waiting for a perfect opportunity you might end up missing the only opportunity that you do get and so for Hamilton he's like I'm not throwing away my shot any cracked door I'm I'm kicking through and I'm going through versus birds kind of like in some versions of, of vampires where they can't enter your house unless you invite them in that's Burr he's he's waiting to strike but he First needs that perfectly open door. That was a cool analogy. I don't know why my brain went there, but I, I like that a lot. Not that I consider Burr a vampire, but I just, I thought it was apt. Anyway, uh, so I was, I was gonna comment on that and then we got satisfied. Part two from the opening salvo before Angelica even walks up, we get the piano melody from the beginning of Satisfied, but it is sped up to be faster to match like this like more up-tempo energetic song. We also get like her singing the same top line melody from Satisfied, but again, sped up uh, to match the tempo of the song. And so because of that, it sounds less depressing. <laughs> like it, it sounds less like she is uh, relegated to this like sad, lonely existence uh, because she did this, this selfless act. And now it sounds more like she's 
content with her decision. Like she knows it's not a perfect decision, but it has worked out. She has found herself a wealthy husband, which was her duty and her responsibility. And she's taking full advantage of the benefits of that, which is the dude pays for everything, even though technically Angelica is also wealthy herself. And the dude is like taking her on a trip to London, which I'm sure is not cheap, especially back in that day. So it's interesting that we got like this back-to-back -back motif reference from Wait For It with the, the Alexander Hamilton, uh, Aaron Burr differences on their approaches to their like ambitious goals right into Angelica and Hamilton and their like whole relationship and for the people who are like they weren't actually yeah yeah I know I'm reacting to the musical not a history book I don't really care that they weren't together in real life that doesn't really affect how distraught I was watching her sing satisfied and like going through that process of like the sacrifice that she had to make for Hamilton so I'm glad that it has worked out somewhat for her in that she knows that her marriage isn't perfect but like honestly what marriage is perfect but she she seems at least more content to just be friends with Hamilton and get her like fun intellectual mental sparring via her interactions with Hamilton and then like get the like husband duties from whatever rich man she ended up marry. I also see that Eliza is in the background as uh Angelica is talking to Hamilton which interesting i don't know what that means i'm gonna unpause and i'm gonna see but i i did like notice like as they're interacting together like eliza's kind of on the back burner but um yeah i still like their relationship I, i'm i'm happy that they're together and while i also like angelica's character i think that eliza gives hamilton more of what he needs i have found a wealthy husband who will keep me in comfort for all my days he is not a lot of fun but I, I didn't see last time how distraught Hamilton looks at the idea of Angelica being married. I, sir, you got a wife, okay? You got, a, you got a whole Honey Badger Jr. on the way, super adorable wife waiting at home for you. No, no. Go ahead, let that, let that other stuff die, okay? I'm gonna need you to lock in, bro. I'm gonna need you to lock in. Don't forget to run. Look at where you are. Look at where you started. The fact that you're alive is a miracle. Alexander joins forces with James Madison and that was interesting with the with the floor spin that they did where as he like longingly wishes for Angelica she like slides out of frame and is like hey make sure to write she se she seems very content on my end like she's like hey I made my decision I've dreaded it and I've worked through it and I'm good now uh Hamilton doesn't seem doesn't seem all the way content but I like that as Angelica slides out of frame, Eliza slides in, uh, and she's like literally like singing, like away from him as she slides in frame, and then ends up singing to him, which is interesting. It that plus the would that be enough at the end? Because obviously that's a reference to that would be enough, but that would be enough is a statement. Would that be enough is a question, and that that difference there did, did she say would that be enough in in that i don't think she said i'm pretty sure every time she says that would be enough like she's reassuring him every single time versus this time um again same same vocal top line melody i don't know if it was like the same piano from that would be enough i maybe i don't know i didn't catch that part but uh definitely the same like like top line vocal melody so like before she says um She's like talking about the, the baby. She's like, if this child has a fraction of your smile and a fraction of your mind or something like that. And then this time she's like, if I could get a fraction of your time and be your peace of mind, would that be enough? So like the, the sh shift here is so interesting. Like she, with her singing, instead of facing him, he's facing Angelica. She's singing off into the distance and kind of like comes into frame. But the stuff that she is saying, while similar, is different to what she said before. And it it is showing some like latent insecurity or, or some latent instability in her confidence that she can like do all of the stuff for him that she she said before. And and I I find that really interesting. I, I d don't like the implications that my brain is like pulling from that, like where that may be leading. But um, yeah, I just, that little, 
I don't know. That was a really dope moment. We're gonna go back. I'm, I'm gonna watch that again, but this song is like packed. It's called Nonstop, but it should be called Motifs Don't Stop because it's, it's literally just like boom, 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 referencing song after song after song that we've come across, which I find really interesting. And I'm talking about all of them as they come up because, well, I, I literally asked you guys in the last video if you guys wanted me to continue to talk about the motifs. And while some of you said, shut up about it, basically, uh, most of you guys said that you were for it. So I am going to keep talking about it as they come up because I enjoy them and a lot of you guys seem to be enjoying it as well. The plan was to write a total of 25 essays. The work divided evenly among the three men. In the end, they wrote 85 essays in the span of six months. Bruh. John Jay got sick after writing five. James Madison wrote 29. Hamilton wrote the other 51. Dog. Dog. Like, okay. Uh, uh, hold on. So, first off, clearly lawyers are not mathematicians. They tried to split 25 by three. I don't know if y'all ever done done y'all multiplication tables. It don't split by three, okay? Maybe they were planning on like co-writing the last paper that I'm, I'm getting on their case, but you get the point. But instead, one dude wrote five. Did he get sick literally or figuratively? Uh, I don't know, but he got sick after writing five, so that's 20 to go. This is very easy. What's 20 divided by two? It's not 51, okay? That's, that, yeah, that's that's crazy. One dude wrote 29 by himself. Like, he, he didn't already done it. And then Hamilton was like, oh, bet. Oh, do you think you can outdo me? Which is funny because like earlier, uh, Burr was complaining like, why are you always writing? Why do you write like you're running out of time or something like that? And yeah, 51 papers in six months is wild. Dog. <laughs> that's that's crazy. He hasn't he hasn't seen his baby not one. Like after, after he sang to him in the crib, he was like, all right, peace. And just disappeared and decided to lock himself in a cage and and write like his life depended on it that's that's crazy 51 paper 51 essays in six months sounds like my english teacher's wet dream but my personal nightmare that's yeah even though i talk a lot i i don't 51 essays is a lot and i like the way that like burr was like so he had the right energy with it right like he was like that's insane because it it is that's that's a lot. You don't say. And I know like, I, I should know this already. They should have taught this to me in school and maybe they did, I don't know. I probably wasn't paying attention, but that's, that's a very shocking realization for me. I was still busy in my head trying to trying to figure out how they thought they were going to split 25 and three. And, and then, he, yeah, 51 is crazy. I guess that because Bird didn't decide to help him, he went and found those other two guys. And then he just ended up doing twice the work himself. But the other guys did at least chip in. That's 34 additional essays helping to defend the Constitution. But also... Alex did all of them. Like he, he was like he did all that he needed to do times two himself. So that's wild. That's really wild. That's so wild. Hamilton wrote the other fifty one. How do you write like you're running out of time? Right day and night like you're running out of time. Everything you fight like you're running out of time. You're running out of time. You're running out of time. How do you write like tomorrow will arrive? How do you write like you needed to survive? They're asking me to leave. I'm doing the best I can to get the people that I need. I'm asking you to be my right hand. Okay, all right. This this video has like fifteen thousand pauses in it, but a lot is going on. Okay, so um, as soon as George Washington like pops up on the ledge we obviously get the or well, maybe not obviously but we get the uh motif of the backing melody of uh history has its eyes on you but again like all of the other songs that have been referenced until this point they it has been sped up and has a a different energy to it this one unlike uh angelica's sped up satisfied rendition this one feels more like anxious because while that song isn't happy this one sounded more anxious whereas 
uh, history has its eyes on you is kind of like a taking you under my wing and and relaying a story to you that is like kind of like a warning of the cons of all of the ambition that you have. This one is more like I need help right now, which is interesting because that's kind of the vibe of right hand man. And he even says like I, I need a right hand man, but they're referencing history has its eyes on you, which so far the songs that like the motifs that they have referenced in wait for it uh satisfied uh that would be enough and this which is history has its eyes on you or th those are the ones i've caught there might have been other ones that i didn't catch but th of those four that i caught for those characters those are not the introduction songs for those characters each of those characters are introduced in songs before that we have aaron burser for Burr, we have Skylar Sisters for both Angelica and Eliza, and then we have Right Hand Man for George Washington. What those songs that are referenced here are, are the songs that display the mindset of these respective characters. And so I, I find it interesting that the, the songs that are being referenced, that are being brought back, are those songs that are, are sh that were previously showing their mindset, and I guess are showing the changes in their mindset. With the exception of Aaron, who is still in this, like, lion wait i'm gonna pounce on the perfect opportunity and in the meantime i'm gonna be frustrated with hamilton uh having his strategy succeed which at some point you have to like self-evaluate and be like if i am trying something and it's not working and i see someone else trying something for the, the same goal and their strategy is working better than mine maybe i should change my strategy but i i get that's very easy to say from like an outside perspective but whatever with the exception of aaron both of the, the Skylar sisters, I say both of, we still have Peggy. I haven't seen Peggy in forever, but both of the Skylar sisters that are mentioned in the song and George Washington have all had like somewhat changes to their mindset uh, from the, the specific songs that are being referenced. And I, I just find that interesting. I'm asking you to be my right hand Treasury man. I know it's a lot to treasury ask or to leave behind the world. You Sir, know. do you want me to run the treasury or state department? Treasury. <laughs> Let's go. Alexander. I have to leave. Alexander. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Helpless. They are asking me to leave. Look around. Isn't this enough? People never be sad. People never be Okay, okay, uh, time out. It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. Um, I don't know what, what the, the big difference between Treasury or uh, State Department would have been, but clearly Hamilton wanted that Treasury gig, did not want that State Department gig. He got it. I'm happy for him. Like obviously his ambition is is starting to pay off. He's not wasting his shot at all. He's writing all these essays, doing law stuff. He's he's taking it all on, right? And then and then I'm reminded that, oh yeah, you're married and and just had a baby and you're about to abandon your wife to go go do this treasury job and, and I'm I'm sad again. I don't like I don't like how he 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 flipped her words back on her with the look how happy we are to be alive right now from That Would Be Enough and also from Skylar Sisters. Again, taking that and shifting the context of that line from originally, look how happy we are. Actually kind of shifting it back to its original meaning when um, Eliza originally said it, which was, hey, look how happy we are to be alive when all of this exciting uh, new stuff is happening in New York. And then obviously it shifted, it shifted to look how lucky we are to be alive given you know, all, the war we're going through to now shifting it back in, in Hamilton's case to look how happy, look how lucky we are to be alive right now where all of this like great opportunities are happening for us to like advance and to, to create and build something that's important. And Eliza's like, dude, we have a whole life we're trying to build here. You can't just run off. I'm guessing that's a position that would force him to move to DC. I don't know. But uh, Eliza clearly is not, and I don't think he's gonna get shot at with the treasury thing, so I think it's a time commitment thing. Uh, and then of course, Angelica comes in, kind of driving the nails further into the coffin of, he's never gonna be satisfied. I did say that, I warned you guys like several songs ago, and um, that sucks. <laughs> that, that sucks a lot. I, 
I am very conflicted because I, I understand like where he's coming from. Like, these are big opportunities. This is the stuff that I've, I've worked my entire life for. This is the stuff that I risked my life for. I took other people's lives for that my friends literally died for. And if we just squander it, then it will all have been for nothing. It's especially poignant given his first words after Lauren's death or after finding out about Lauren's death is I have a lot of work to do. And so like all of these things are connected for him. And I, I get that. But at the same time, I get Eliza's stance of like, when is it ever going to be enough? Like, are you always going to forever be on this mouse wheel of chasing after more and more and more and more? And maybe he is like a, a lot of people who are wired like this are forever tormented by ambition. It is a curse, just like it is a, a blessing, but it's, it's still sad, you know, because I do feel like Eliza genuinely loves him and genuinely wants the best for him. But at the same time, he's going so nonstop that it, it's like crowding her out. You know, it, there's no space left for him to do anything else. Uh, he is writing like he's running out of time. The issue with that is these moments with family are precious. And I know I sound like a hypocrite because I'm literally working on a family vacation. But I would say that to say that, like, I, I get it. I, I get both sides of it. And I... I'm conflicted because I can't say that either one is, is right or wrong. It just, it just is the difficult situation that they find themselves in. And had Hamilton made different decisions, our country would be different. Like he would have had a better family life, but our country may not have gotten off the ground. But at the same time, I understand that Eliza doesn't care about that. I didn't marry the country. I married you. I didn't get pregnant by the country. I got pregnant by you. And so, um... Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's, it, yeah. And then, you know, George Washington coming in on his, I don't know what kind of Trojan horse thing they got him on right now, but uh, he's reminding like, hey, by the way, history has its eyes on you, which is of course a, a reference back to his warning from before. This is just like a, a it's motif madness. I, I jokingly had said that we had been through a motif marathon, like in the previous video that leading up to this, all of these songs had had little motifs in it, but this song is just, it, it's it's all of it's all it's it, like all of the songs prior to this point. She even said helpless earlier, like she being Eliza. So um, also the fact that her response to sorry, this is a lot of thoughts because there's a lot of stuff going on. The fact that her response to Hamilton's uh, like turning her words back on her of like look at how lucky we are to be alive right now was helpless is very sad because like that. Helpless is the song that she fell in love with him, is the song where he promised that he would always have her back uh, in her dad's living room. And now he's, he's kind of reneging on that promise. I know in his mind he's not because his promise was, I will make sure to be a great enough man to be deserving of your love to make sure that you are always going to be financially secure. And he is not reneging on that part, but that's that's not what Eliza needs. And she has told you that over and over and over again, but he's not hearing it because again, he, he, yeah, it's, it's a very complex, it's, it's, a, it's a complex situation. It's, yeah, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna go back some because like I've, so much is happening that I just, I, I absolutely feel like more so than any other video, I am, I am missing things. Stuff is like falling through the cracks. And part of it is like the, the strange situation that I'm in. But also part of it is that this song is like, it's, it's, it's so much stuff is happening. You know that. They knew that's why they made this the last song of this act. Because you, you gotta need some time to process. It is referencing like basically everything that, that came to this point. It's kind of like one of those episodes in TV shows where they're like, last time on such and such. And it like takes you through like everything in the story arc that led up to that point. This, this song is like that while also developing upon those themes at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> Treasury. <laughs> Let's go. Alexander. I have to leave. Alexander. Isn't this enough? He will never be.
okay so that 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 was crazy right like that yeah so much i i find this song so interesting obviously they like worked in a bunch of like motifs and stuff but the motifs that they worked in being that they weren't the introductory songs to the characters instead being the the songs that like tell you the, the character's mindsets and then like the circling around him and all that it, like it it really drives home the point that like hamilton's craziness affects everybody around him he and obviously the war as well but like from the standpoint of like the characters he has impacted all of these people in ways due to just being the the ambitious my shot alexander hamilton uh version of himself that he is and i and i found it very interesting that when he makes his decision and we'll get back to the de the decision in a second but when he makes the decision he references the two songs that are like both about his ambition the most up until this point which is like obviously the just you wait from alexander hamilton the, the song and also i'm not throwing away my shot from my shot and uh in the process of of being this man who would allow him to be a great man he has he has a, impacted these people in different ways. Eliza and Burr are both frustrated and more insecure than they were when they met him, uh, due to like his ambition, kind of pushing them both to the back burner in different ways, obviously. Uh, but they've both like mentally, emotionally been negatively impacted. Angelica has found somebody who like is on her level mentally, but. The issue is that person is not her husband. So as a result, she is now like chronically, not to say that she's unsatisfied in her, her marriage, but she knows that more is out there mentally, emotionally that she could connect with. And even though she seems to be content with her decision to marry the rich man, to step into her responsibility as the oldest, she is also still like, hey, write me, you know, like, and, and so, and she's like, oh, my husband isn't fun, da 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 Like, it's, it's one thing to be like, oh, I wish I could have X, Y, and Z of this perfect partner. It's another thing to be like, I I know this person has half of the stuff I want in a person, and this person has half the stuff I want in a person, and I have, I'm forced to choose. And so, she made her decision, and she seems to be content with that decision for the most part, but is still, because she knows Hamilton, knows that they're is a man out there who can fulfill those other needs that she had although she can't be with him and then with george washington we have the standpoint of it seems almost like he feels like he can't really rely on anybody else like he he is trying to maybe not anybody else but he feels like he has to rely on on hamilton in this process he he is trying to you know lead build this nation whatever and he's like i need people who I know can get the job done. And he knows that Alexander can get the job done. He knows that Alexander is ambitious enough to take the job. Um, and so as a result, he's kind of like giving Alexander invitation to like destroy his home life. But um, he, if he hadn't interacted with Hamilton in the military, he wouldn't have just been thinking like, hey, this junior lawyer, whatever uh, Burr called him from New York is going to be the secretary of treasury, whatever. Um, and so I still have that to say that this nonstop song, it is non, it fits the name perfectly. It's not, it's like every single moment, something is happening. All of these different things are being uh, referenced and developed over the course of the song. Uh, some of which I'm sure I missed. So if, if there are other things that you feel like I should have said, but didn't say in this video, please leave that in the comment section down below. But because this song is so thick and layered, it's, it's very interesting to me. And at the end we get like, Hamilton being basically posed that not ultimatum because I don't know that they're like gonna get a divorce but pose that difficult choice that a lot of ambitious people have to to make which is family or career and obviously we see which one he chose uh, and I can't say for certain that he made the right or wrong choice because again his actions in part led directly to our nation becoming th the greatest empire in history but also his actions led to hurting his wife, hurting his friend to the point that his friend like literally shoots him. I don't know what kind of relationship he got with Philip, but I'm sure it ain't great. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's 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 a it's a complex and difficult question for anybody to answer. And a lot of people, millions of people have been posed it. There's somebody right now who is struggling with that decision and trying to figure out what what 
choice they're going to make. Uh, and I do feel like Lauren's death in this and like the fact that like these doors opened as a direct result of a war does impact that decision. It's not like he's just, hey, I have a job promotion, but it's, it's gonna cause me to be away from my family or should I stay with my family and like keep my quote unquote remedial job? A, a lawyer is not a remedial job, but you get what I'm saying. But I feel like the context that led to the choice for him is greatly factored into the choice itself. But I don't know, I don't know, it was, it was crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching until this point. I, I feel like I, I've been in a car accident. Like I, I feel like dizzy and, and like so much is swirling through my brain. Uh, and I don't know that I, I've like articulated all of the thoughts that I, I had on this well. Uh, but thank you so much for watching until this point. I really, really do appreciate it. If you have, make sure to drop a crown emoji in the comment section down below because you are royal. I really do appreciate it. And if you've watched until this point and you aren't subscribed, which again, as I said in the intro, is a lot of you guys, like a surprisingly large amount of you guys ever watching all of the videos but not subscribed, please do subscribe. It's free. It don't hurt you none. It definitely helps out the channel a lot. I really would appreciate it. So definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button down below not to miss all of my reactions to act two. This took eight parts. I don't know if act two is going to take eight parts, seven parts, five parts. I don't know, but we are continuing to go on. So thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey up until this point. You guys have a great day and I'm seeing all of you guys here on the channel next time. Peace. These guys no blues A new love, but we know that it accrues Like time in a cue, wet shampoo, new bamboo Much more of it will ensue I'm caught in this trance in loop Of sinking down in the stew You change up the brew, now life tastes so brand new It's delicious like fondue Under the moonlight tonight Stars and hearts shimmering Shimmering, who I am You're a bad guy, you are. Let me know.